God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the 35th chapter of the book of Genesis. In our last lesson, we only read down to verse 5, and I did so purposely cut that lesson short. Uh, today we will begin reading at verse 6. I may reread verse 5 and continue to the conclusion of the chapter, if time allots. I want you to know that I'm doing very, very, my very best to make the Word of God plain to you uh, and do and fulfill the purpose that we started out, and that's reading through the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Uh, God has blessed us to do and stay on course, and I am grateful to Him for all that He's doing. Also, I thank God that He has given us listeners, you. Uh, you tune in to listen to this ministry. It's a blessing to me for when you, when you let me know that you are listening and that you are uh, getting something out of this Word. Just, just saying that you like me on Facebook and Twitter and uh, all of the places on the web, uh, MySpace and all the places that we bro broadcast, it's a blessing to me. I want you to know without you, this, mess, this ministry wouldn't be necessary. I could, I could study the Bible myself, by myself, not on camera, but because of you, I'm doing all that I can to share my devotion with you so that you and I can get something out of the Word of God. And I ask that you pray for me continually. And I and that's not just a word that I say. I, I ask people to pray for me, but I genuinely mean it. I need your prayers because I realize I could not do this, uh, this myself without the anointing of God. I need your prayers, I need your support, and I need your words of encouragement. Well, in our last lesson, we read down to verse 5, and we talked to you uh, in our last lesson. If you were, was not with us in our last lesson, I encourage you to listen to our last lesson. It will, it will help you, and it will uh, give you insight in the Word of God and help you find and know the God of the Bible. Uh, so many people don't know God as He is, and that's what I want you to grasp and get from all of my teaching. I want you to get to know the God of the Bible. Uh, so you'll know uh, what he stands for and what he loves and what he dislikes. God loves you so much that he wants you to know him. He wants you to become a part of him. And in, to do so, you gotta, you have to know his word. And so that's one reason that I'm dedicating myself to making his word plain so that we can all grasp uh, who God is uh, and know the God of the Bible and not just something someone come up with. You got to understand this. So many things going on in our world today. We got even folks trying to prove that uh, God is a side of him that's a, that, that is female and all that kind of nonsense. That's not of God. That is of the devil. I, I want you to know you're walking on thin ice. Uh, uh, you're walking, uh, uh, committing an abomination when you try to bring God down uh, to human intellect and, and, and put him in some kind of box. God is so large and he's so real uh, that you need to realize who he is and how far up above us uh, as human beings that he is. Uh, get to know the God of the Bible and, and not all the fictitious stuff that people come up with. You got to understand we, we live in a realm now that people are trying to uh, to bring God down and fit him in our society. Uh, and that's the wrong way to view God. Uh, if you have a society, if you're in a society, what you should do is find the God of the Bible uh, and try to get your society to please him uh, and know him uh, and serve him. Uh, that's the way to do it. Don't try to bring God down to your intellect. You'll miss out on who he is and uh, miss out on all that he has for you. Well, let's read verse 5. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Well, remember what the sons of Jacob did. They, they killed all the, uh, the men uh, of, uh, of, of that area because, they, uh, because the, the prince of that area, uh, he, uh, he went in to their sister, uh, had sex with her out of wedlock, and also had sex with her not being circumcised, and uh, uh, Levi and Simeon, uh, uh, Simeon uh, 
they devised that plan, had all the men circumcised. On the third day when they were sore, they went in and slew all the men with their sword. And here uh, we find that the, the people around that area, they did not pursue after Levi and Simeon because of what they did. In verse 6, and Jacob came to Luz. Uh, uh, which is in the land of Canaan, uh, that is Bethel, uh, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place uh, El Bethel, because the God, because their God appeared unto him uh, when he fled from the face of his brother. El Bethel. Uh, we're going to talk about it as we continue to read. In verse 8, and, uh, and Deborah, you can call it either way you want to, Deborah or Deborah, uh, but Deborah, uh, Rachel's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel uh, under the oak, and uh, the name of it was called uh, Elanbekuth. Uh, Elanbekuth. Uh, uh, let's continue reading in verse 9. And God appeared unto Jacob again, and he came into, uh, when he came out of Padanaram, and blessed him. Verse 10, and God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob, thy, uh, thy name shall be called any more Jacob, and Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. We read about that where God changed the name of, uh, uh, of Jacob to Israel. Jacob being a supplanter. Uh, we read about when Jason, uh, Jacob wrestled the angel uh, all night long. And the angel threw his, uh, uh, threw, uh, his, his hip out of joint uh, uh, to where he had to lift. you got to understand. Uh, uh, and uh, there is where he met God there. Uh, and God changed his name. In verse 11, and God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Can you understand? Uh, he is confirming much of the things that he said. See, God spoke to Abraham, God spoke to Isaac, and told them the same thing, that all of these things would happen through him, and here God is speaking to Jacob, uh, speaking to Israel. Let me say his name as it is now. He's speaking to him, kings shall come out of thy loins. Uh, verse 12, and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I, I will give it, uh, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. Uh, well, can you understand? God is making a promise to Jacob, uh, and God al always uh, uh, fulfills his promise. Uh, his word comes out to accomplish what he says. Uh, verse 3, and God went up, uh, 13, uh, and God went up from him uh, in the place where uh, he talked with him. Uh, 14, and Jacob said... Uh, set up a pillar uh, in the place where he had talked with him, uh, even a pillar of stone, uh, and he poured a, a drink offering upon it, uh, and he poured oil thereon. Uh, verse 15, Jacob called the name of the place uh, where God spoke to him, Bethel. Uh, and we'll get intelligence of why he called it Bethel, uh, and then we will also get intelligence on why he named it El Bethel. Uh, let's, let's continue reading. And they journeyed from uh, from Bethel, uh, and there he uh, was but a little way uh, to come unto to Ephrath, uh, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. Uh, well, uh, uh, labor, you got to understand, uh, uh, this is the woman that Jacob loved, the one that he worked uh, seven years and, and, and was tricked and had to work seven more years to get her to be his wife. Uh, and she was uh, in travail. She was having a baby at this time, uh, a very hard labor. In verse 17, and it came to pass when she was in hard labor uh, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, uh, thou shalt have, uh, have this son also. Uh, you will have this baby just like you had the rest of them, uh, uh, just like you had your other child. You're going to have this baby also. Uh, uh, verse 18, and it came to pass uh, uh, as as her soul was departing, uh, she, for she died, uh, that she called his name uh, uh, Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Well, you got to understand, she died in child labor. She was having very hard labor when Benjamin was born, and she died giving birth to
to Benjamin. Verse 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. This is the first mention of the city of Bethlehem, the city that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born in. And we're going to read about Bethlehem more in Scripture. Specifically, we read about him when we studied the New Testament, but we will recap a lot of things in the New Testament as we study the Old Testament here. But here, this is actually the first mention of that, that place called Bethlehem. Uh, in verse 20, and Jacob set a pillar upon her, her grave, uh, that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. So many, in so many words, it was still there as of the time of this writing. Uh, and Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. Verse 22, and it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bela, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Well, uh, I, I won't go into that, uh, into specifics of, of this situation. Uh, but Reuben, his oldest son, lay with, with uh, Jacob's concubine. And, and uh, I'm not going into the legal, legality of, of, uh, uh, of this man having a concubine and all of that kind of stuff now. But you got to understand, in that day, before before the law was given, a whole lot of things were done uh, that was not conducive uh, to our lifestyle in the day that we live, uh, or even conducive to the plan and the will of God. Uh, so here, uh, um, uh, uh, Israel had a concubine, uh, and uh, his son Reuben went in and lay with her. Uh, uh, the, the lady's name was Bila. Uh, well, uh, uh, now was, uh, the sons of Jacob were twelve. Let's read about it in verse 23. The sons of Leah, uh, Reuben's, uh, uh, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun. Uh, verse 24, the sons of Rachel uh, were, jo were, were Joseph and Benjamin. Uh, Rachel had two sons. Remember, Joseph born, she died in childbirth with Benjamin. Uh, verse 25, and the sons of Billah. Rachel's handmaiden, Dan and Naphtali. Uh, verse 26, <clears throat> and the sons of Zelpha, Leah's handmaiden, Gad and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob uh, uh, who were born to him in Padanaran. Can you understand? We got a list of all of his sons and who they came from at this time. Let's continue reading. Uh, and Jacob came unto Isaac, his father, uh, unto Mamre, uh, uh, unto the city of, of Arba, which is, Heb uh, which is Hebron, uh, where Abraham and Isaac sore joined. Uh, well, you got to understand, such a long time. He's been gone over 20 years now uh, uh, to another land. So he came back. His father was still living. Thank God that his father was still living. He got to lay hands on, lay eyes on his fathers again, uh, his father again. Uh, in verse 28, and the days of Isaac were a hundred and four score years, a uh, hundred and four score years, uh, one score being 20 years, four score uh, is 80 years. So uh, uh, Isaac was 180 years old, uh, and Isaac died uh, and was gathered unto his people, uh, being old and full of days. Uh, and his sons uh, Esau and Jacob buried him. Uh, thank God that God had brought Esau and Jacob back together. Uh, when Isaac died, both of them, uh, they buried their father. Uh, well, I want you to know that uh, it's a blessing. Uh, uh, God God is showing you himself in this family, uh, showing you that he knows how to heal, he knows how to reconcile, he knows how to take bad situations uh, and make them all right. Uh, I want you to get to know the God of the Bible. Uh, everybody that you read about ha does not have good character. Uh, they went through things uh, just like you and I go through things, uh, but God has a way of taking negatives and turn it around and reconciling them. Get to know the God of the Bible. He'll do the same thing for you. You may have troubles in your life. You may have done things wrong in your life, but that does not mean that God despises you or cast you off forever. God has a way of taking you through circumstances and getting glory out of your life. <coughs> well, my friends, I want you to know that I love you. 
I love you from the depths of my heart. Uh, if you would like to contact me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Work with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200483, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, I want you to know that we have our CD. It will be a blessing to you to listen to this CD. You will be a blessing to this ministry if you purchase it. Uh, remember our book, all of our work you can con uh, you can purchase uh, on Am at Amazon.com, uh, also iTunes and TuneCore, many of the places on the World Wide Web, uh, wherever they sell music and books. Uh, just punch in my name, Chester L. Figure Sr., uh, and it will take you to my work. Uh, I want you to know that I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, God bless you.